want you to really imagine this into your mind. Imagine accomplishing every goal that you set out. You build the body, you make the money, and you get the girl. You feel so happy. Everyone who knew you previously is like so astonished. And you're finally starting to get those guys and girls from your high school who are being a bit jealous and hateful towards you now because they've seen how much you've grown and they say that you've changed. And yeah, of course you've changed. You've become successful. So what happens next? You've achieved everything that you've wanted. And now Jeffrey appears. Why don't you just take some time to enjoy your accomplishments? You've built the body, so go and enjoy the pizza. You've made the money. How about we spend just a little bit on drugs? You've got the girl, but what if we cheat on her? Are you going to listen to Jeffrey? Or will you take the path of Adonis? Adonis has a different message for you. Do not get complacent. Success may lead to failure if you ease up. Sacrifice must be progressively overloaded. Say it with me. Sacrifice must be progressively overloaded. I've been training Muay Thai now for like the past seven days, almost training every single day. It's getting intense. I'm, bro, I'm fucking loving it. And I'm literally considering maybe, just maybe, I will actually compete and like sign up for a fight for this. There's something that I just want you to visualize. I want you to think of like some fighting skill as a martial arts or MMA or UFC, whatever it is that you want to visualize, maybe boxing or kickboxing, whatever it is, any kind of like athletic endeavor. I want you to visualize the guy who is like the underdog and he's kind of training in the darkness. He goes to that sweaty, almost like worn out gym that has like a leak in the roof. He goes there at 5 a.m. The, the heating doesn't even work, but he warms up by himself. He punches the cold ass bag that's like old and he's training hard and hard and hard. He dedicates his life to this endeavor. He goes home and he literally just researches more and learns more and he eats meals entirely based on his performance. He's so utterly focused and then he starts making incredible progress and he gets results and he gets signed up to fights and he wins those fights and he performs so well he gets into like let's say the UFC or some big boxing tournaments and he wins and wins and wins and wins and suddenly he gets so famous out of nowhere there's so many opportunities for him what was once a man that was so truly dedicated to the act of of fighting of his sport well now he's doing press conferences and sponsorships and you know he, he won a lot of money from that tournament and Jeffrey is very tempting cocaine and women this is this is not an abnormal story whatsoever I can't tell you anyone specific like any celebrity or athlete because I don't watch sports or movies or anything but I assume that maybe someone in the comments will tell you oh yeah well this is exactly the story of this guy who did you know who was like really really focused but then he became successful and then he lost the success because he lost his focus success may lead to failure and honestly more times than not it actually does what happens to those rappers that come out of the hood with one of their songs pop off and they literally get a million dollar brand deal they literally get like a sponsorship like a partnership or however it works of like a million dollars they get a million dollars sent to their bank account and they're from the hood they are used to having nothing they're not even used to having fucking bank accounts now he's got a seven digit bank account all of his friends are going crazy his family's going crazy they're throwing parties and then they're getting strippers and prostitutes and they're buying all these fancy cars and jewelry and then the money's rinsed and his friends disappear the women disappear he's in debt how many like talented people do you see come up and then go straight down do not let this happen to you we are on somewhat of a similar trajectory to these people the people who have gotten fame through like sports or singing or whatever endeavor like really got them famous something similar can happen to you in your self-improvement journey because you'll just find that you're becoming more and more successful and you'll get more and more opportunities especially if you go into like a high level career or business and then it can be so easy to get complacent your ego can blind you and say well you know we've already built the body so i don't really need to train that hard anymore i can take some extra rest days it's not going to do anything to my physique you know i've already got the body and the strength so i can eat that chocolate cake right now there is a video on my channel where you can see me coping with that exact phrase it's one of the oldest videos if you go onto the channel and sort by like oldest it's it's titled um something about like five year body it's not like the actual body transformation video but it's like what what does it feel like to build your ideal body something like that i'm in like a pink room and i literally like i'm pretty sure it's still public on this on this channel and i literally say like oh yeah well you know i've built my dream physique so i i, I can take more rest days like i can take more days off the gym and i can eat whatever i want now what do you think happened my physique went worse and worse and worse and then i felt like shit because it was so important to me but i got complacent you must know that the more success that you build in anything you do, whether it's meditation or your physique or some sporting competition or some business or any kind of creative endeavor, you must know that the more success you build, the more that you have to constantly keep putting in. Sacrifice must be progressively overloaded. I think that's such an important sentence for you to remember. Maybe you write that down. Sacrifice 
must be progressively overloaded. It's so important for you to keep in mind what are you sacrificing? How much discomfort have you felt recently? Because if your answer to both of those questions was not much, please believe me when I say this to you. Please take this seriously. I, Hamza, have full confidence that you will fail soon. I have full confidence that another man will surpass you in the race that you are in. Another man will take the rewards that you are gonna get. Another man will get the SMV increase, the SMV, you know, the boost to his SMV so he's more attractive in the sexual marketplace. Another man will attract the women that you would have attracted. Another man will attract your future wife if you slow down. Nobody wants to think like this. You know, we, we all wanna have this soft like, oh yeah, like, uh, everyone wants to have this like soft, playful attitude with success and making progress to your goals these days, especially in terms of like dating as well. The thing is, one of our main goals, a lot of people don't admit this, but it is to attract women. It is to, att to attract the best woman possible. Maybe you want a wife, maybe you want to have a woman who's the mother of your children. Maybe you just want to have like, like multiple women. Whatever it is, it is like a big part of our lives. And a lot of guys are in this thing of like, nope, like I don't care about girls, I'll just focus on me. But it's like, yeah, you're focusing on you, why? You're, you're going on monk mode, why? So that you can improve yourself more to eventually attract women. And you, I'm not saying that you do it entirely for them. I'm not saying that you do it entirely for like sex or dating. But it is, of course, like a big part of life. Relationships are probably the biggest, most important, most fulfilling part of our lives. And so we've got to discuss that dynamic where as a young man, if you slow down, some other guy will overtake you and take your woman. Well, she's not yours anymore anyway. I want you to just visualize yourself in a race, like a 400 meter race right now. And at the finish line, you see the finish line way over there. At the finish line is literally your dream girl. And if you come in, let's say first place, she will be yours. And so you're running and running and running and running and then you get distracted. What do you get distracted by? Jeffrey, his drugs, his parties, maybe Jess and her Instagram pictures. You get distracted and you, you know your, your head turns and you're not running as fast and the guy behind you is so focused that he goes straight for that dash. He goes straight for the finish line and he finishes first place. Imagine the life that you would have had with that woman, the kids that you were gonna have and you're gonna take them to school together and you were gonna look into each other's eyes every single night. You were gonna share so many beautiful moments and I, and I love yous. You were gonna make love together. You are gonna make children together and now she's gonna have that experience with someone else and she doesn't even know you anymore. When you slow down as a man, when you get complacent, that is what the fear is. I don't think enough people talk to you in this way where they literally tell you, okay, this is how dating works. It's cutthroat as fuck. No one wants to talk to you like this. Everyone will tell you, well, you know, just like, just be yourself. Just, uh, it, it, it's so nice to hear those words. And it's so nice to hear like, oh yeah, well, you know, uh, fuck these thoughts, like, uh, uh, fuck these hoes. Like they're, they're not important. Focus on yourself, king. You can take those polar opposites if you want. You can live those lives if you want. And you can live like a sad, lonely existence. The realistic way to navigate your dating life is to realize that if you get complacent as a man, especially in terms of your success, your development, building those attractive characteristics, you will get less quality of women or a lower quality wife. You can't afford to get complacent. And you know, a thought that I had, I wasn't gonna even mention this on this video. Me and my friend Nabil, he said something that actually gave me like a little bit of, like a little bit of like a depressed mindset, like a little bit of like a somewhat of like a, nihilistic view on life. We sat downstairs and, and I talked to him about, you know, being like a 1% man. And he said, Hamza, you're already a 0.1% man. Now there's some Jeffries who are watching this video and they'll be like, oh, Hamza isn't, Hamza's brown. And that means that he, he has to pay the curry tax and like his eyelid shapes like a certain certain shape. So that means he's ugly, you know, some shit like that. But the truth is, bro, you know, we're not supposed to say this, bro. I'm supposed to be really humble. I'm supposed to tell you like, you know, the success I've built, like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not there yet, guys. I'm supposed to like say this shit, bro. Obviously, I'm in the top 0.1% of men. And that, that seems really crazy. Like, wait, 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 hang on, hang on. Let's say top 1%. That means that there's 100 guys, I'd have to be the best one, bro, I'm there. Top 0.1%, bro, I'm there. In terms of income, in terms of confidence, in terms of attractiveness, bro, <laughs> I sound like a dick. I feel like I'm there. And my friend did as well, and he said this to me. And I got really sad, because I thought like, oh, well, I've like, I've completed the race then, and you know, life's, life's like really nice and everything, but I thought it was gonna be better than this. I thought there was like, you know, I want there to be more to strive for. I don't wanna be done with self-improvement just yet. Then I did some journaling about this, cause I, I really got like this sense of sadness, cause I was like, oh, well, I don't wanna be done yet. Like obviously, you know, I'll maintain where I'm at and stuff, but I thought like, is this it? I'm at the top 0.1%. Like I thought, you know, like the whole point of like, you know, the the sort of pickup artist, red pill space is kind of like, oh yeah, get into the top 20% and I feel like I'm in the top 1% or 0.1%. And I got really sad by thinking, okay, I'm already there. So like, you know, it's boring and like, you know, 
know, I wish I was getting more results. I wish that there was more to strive for. But then I journaled and said, you know what? There is more to strive for because being the best out of a thousand guys is like, yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of nice and everything, but it, bro, it's, it's not that hard. If there's a thousand guys, 700 of them are fat, 250 are skinny or skinny fat. 20 guys are like actually like athletic and actually like muscular and maybe one guy has the ideal proportions of an aesthetic physique. But you can get better and better and better than that. So I set my sights higher and I thought, okay, I see these like Instagram models and you know, they're, they're really attractive, they're really successful, they've got like 1 million followers. It's, you know, like guys like Mike Thurston on YouTube, right? And that's like a guy who's got like an amazing physique. He's got a fantastic business, a huge social media following. That's not, that's a guy who's better than 0.1%, right? That's like a 0.0001% guy. And I asked, okay, well, is there, progress to be made when I push more for that. And I was like, yeah, well, of course there is. Would I get more results from life? Would I get a better lifestyle? Would I attract better women? Well, yeah, of course I would. This is when I realized something amazing and I really hope that I can explain this to you in the right way. The best results in life come when you usually could get complacent. Now would be a normal time for me to get complacent. Bitch. Don't ask why. And in fact, my friend Nabil literally said this to me. He was like, bro, this was your goal for two years. So this was my goal to get to Thailand, to be able to like, you know, work online and have like a social media following. This was my goal for two years. This would be where I could get complacent, right? But the best results come from after the time where you could get complacent because you'll get complacent once you have a level of success. If you continue past that, that is when you'll actually get more. Because I'm, I'm trying to explain this to you, right? This re weird realization that I had, I realized that when you're first making progress in your self-improvement journey, you don't get like that many like, results, if we say results is things like, oh, you know, the attraction from women and you, you make more money and everything. You don't get that much to begin with because you've, yeah, you know, you, um, you go to the gym and you start getting a little bit more compliments, but it's not too much. It's really not too much. What happens is that success in all ways is always exponential. So the results that you see from here to here are not that different. You know, the result, let's say you're a fat guy, right? You are 30% body fat going from 30% to 27%, it's not suddenly you just gotta change your life and oh my, oh my God, everyone, look, 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 he's amazing. He's gonna get signed brand deals and it, like loads of girls are attracted to you now. No, not really. But like, that's probably the hardest part in terms of effort. That's what like the start is probably the hardest. And so effort kind of goes on a graph like this where it's like really high to begin with and it goes down and results are kind of like the opposite where it's like you get no results to begin with, but then you get exponential results the longer you stay on this ride. Because that 3% body fat that that fat guy lost won't get him like any more attraction from women. Whereas let's say you've already been lifting for like many, many years. You're already onto this. You've got like a physique similar to me right now. Maybe I'm like 12% body fat right now. If I lost 3% body fat, I would literally be on like fitness model level physique. The results would go like this. This is what I realized in the book that I'm reading is called Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life by Brian Tracy. And he's mentioned this analogy a few times that I really want you to visualize. Bitch, loud ass fucking play. Imagine a horse race. So you know, a bunch of horses are like racing around this circle and whatever horse like wins the race wins, like, you know, the money for the owner or the guys who have placed bets on it. So you imagine this horse race and there's two very close competitors. The first horse, like the winning horse, wins by this much. Literally, the wind's by the nose. He like, his nose literally tags it. The, the second horse was just behind. Is the second horse gonna get a little bit less of the results from this? No. Okay, now imagine a race with humans. It's like Usain Bolt and there's a bunch of guys, you know, really fast guys. One guy is like the top guy, the fastest guy, the one who wins the race. His speed is like te exactly 10 seconds. And the guy behind him is 10.1 seconds. So he was just off by like 0 0.1. Is the second guy gonna get 99% of the, the rewards of the first guy? No, of course not. The first guy will get exponentially all of the rewards and everyone else will get such a small amount. It's like it compounds, it's exponential. Do you see how this works in, in the game of life? All of the rewards come later on. All of the rewards come when you don't get complacent, when you could have gotten complacent. When you reach a good level of success, that is when you are ready, so close to reaching like an exponential level of success. Does that make sense? So where are you in your self-improvement journey right now? You've been exercising, you've been meditating, hopefully you've started like a business or you've been leveling up a career or you've been studying harder. Now would be a good time for you to get complacent and to coast and to, you know, enjoy the results that you've gotten. And this, you know what? That just made me realize. I literally just said, enjoy the results that you've gotten. And I just visualized how much this topic links 
with Dayton. And it's a weird thing for me to talk about because by saying, you know, results and rewards, it, you're kind of speaking about women like they're like the reward, you know, reward, like they're like objects and stuff. And we don't want to come across that way. But we all do have to admit, men and women who are watching this, that there is total truth that like women's attraction to you increases when you become more successful, more attractive, more confident and everything, right? So it is a result of a man becoming confident, successful, attractive, that he gets women. It's a weird way to say it without sounding like misogynistic or whatever, but the truth is the attraction of women is a reward of self-improvement and hard work. It's undeniable, everyone, you know, that doesn't sound rude, hopefully, and that is the truth. It's so easy for you to start your self-improvement journey feeling quite like lonely, being in like the bottom 80% of men and you know, not really getting attention, real attention. You know, you can sometimes you get a girl who's like messaging you back on Snapchat and Shopper. I'm talking real attention where like girls are like actively wanting to like date you and sleep with you and like, you know, they wanna be your girlfriend and everything. You might be in that position where that's not happening, but then you go through your self-improvement journey, you build some muscle, you get way more confident, your body's like sexy as fuck. You're starting to get two, three times more Tinder matches than what you're used to. You're getting way more attraction from girls. You're getting literally catcalled in the street. Girls don't realize how much this actually happens, bro. When you build muscle and you look good, bro, like the stuff that a lot of girls complain about, they don't realize that they actually do it themselves to attractive guys. Like shit like catcalling, bro, like I'm used to it now. It, it happens on, like here way, way more often because it's part of like this, the marketing of like massage parlors and everything to, you know, shout at guys when they're going past and say like, oh, you know, a sexy man, they come here and stuff. But especially when like I went out one night here and the amount of women and even gay guys and everything that groped me was fucking insane and you know as a guy you're not supposed to talk about yeah this is a fucking separate topic but yeah just a quick rant about being sexy but yeah you can find that you make progress on your self-improvement journey and then you start getting attraction from girls and it is so easy for you to then get complacent and think oh well you know like i'm having sex with these girls i'm, I'm dating a girl now and this is the best thing ever she's amazing and everything without thinking like that's a form of you getting complacent. This is something which is ruthless, it's cold hearted, which it's so like weird and dark to talk about, but I, no one talks about this and I, this might be some of the best advice that I could give you. You know, like something important to keep in mind. When you're on self-improvement, like holistic self-improvement, the Adonis way, every six months you will be attracting a new tier of woman. Believe me when I say that, every six months you will be attracting a new tier of woman and it will be slow at first, but like the longer you stay on it, the more that you reach success and, and aesthetics in your physique, and money and confidence and, and attractiveness through looks maxing and grooming and all this stuff, bro, like healing your childhood trauma, all this stuff really does help. And it really just increases like the quality of women who are, are attracted to you. And it would be such a shame for you to just get complacent and the first girl that shows you attention, you quickly like latch onto her and hold her down because just round the corner, after another few months of self-improvement was a new girl. And like, this is, this is really dark, man, because it's, you know, it's a very weird concept to talk about, but it is something that you will experience. You will experience a sense of complacency with all parts of life and with dating. I, I personally like, you know, really value dating. It's always in my mind and everything. And so this is why it's like quite important for me to talk about this because I've really felt this. Like the quality of women that you attract will just constantly keep going up and up and up and up. When do you stop? When do you say like, oh, you know, this is good enough. The YouTuber First Man, so you can search that, First Man. He's a very, very good YouTuber, his name's Chris. And he has this concept that he calls stick or twist. And it's kind of like what you want to do when you're playing a game of cards and you're trying to get to like 21 and you can choose to either stick or twist. And he says that most guys will stick at where they're at. They'll play it safe. They've gotten to like 12. You, the, the game of this like card game is to get to 21 and they've gotten to like 12 or 13 and they'll stick just to be safe. But he said, you've got to become way more ruthless and more of a risk taker to say, no, fuck it, twist. Give me another card. Let me get closer to 21. You might go bust, but fine. And it's the exact same concept with like all parts of life, but especially with dating. Do you want to stick with where you're at right now or do you want to twist and get better and better now you don't have to do this autistically you don't have to say like oh well i'm never going to settle with a girl because they'll keep getting better but the idea is just don't be like 17 years old and think yep this is the best woman i'm ever going to get in my life so I'll, I'll better pair down with her and this is where this mindset usually gets critiqued by some people who say well no no, no this is toxic first of all and second well why don't you just get get a girl who's like improving herself but the truth is like a low value young man who's just recently gotten on onto self-improvement is not attracting the quality of a woman who's really on self-improvement herself. There's always that kind of value deviance from men and women. Like men generally need to like date downwards. Generally, that's how it works. 
And so if you're a guy recently on self-improvement for the last six months or one year, the girls that you meet who are finally at attracted to you, they're probably not gonna be on self-improvement. They're probably not gonna be like gym girls with amazing bodies because those girls are like way up here. They're probably not gonna be girls who are like way, way, way like into meditation and spirituality and they all do like yoga and journaling and reading and they're so wholesome because again, their value's way up here. Maybe you're here and you can date the girls who are down here, the girls who go and watch Netflix and eat junk food. You don't wanna stay complacent there. But then when do you settle? When do you stick? This is the kind of thoughts that you journal about. Now you're beginning to see the value of journaling because this is such like a big broad concept that like almost no one's talking to you about. Your parents, your teachers, they're never gonna explain this dynamic to you. Like, oh yeah, don't settle. Your dad isn't gonna come and sit with you and say like, well son, stick or twist, are you gonna get complacent because Hamza said sacrifice must be progressively overloaded. You don't hear this type of advice from anyone else. So it's very important for you to take this seriously. It's kind of like a solo journey where you need to really, really be introspective. Think slowly, take some time to decide these like big, big decisions, journal, a lot and ask yourself stick or twist am I getting complacent here with everything let's say you built up a fantastic physique are you getting complacent recently because you say that oh well I can enjoy some of the junk food now that's complacency whatever you've done to build yourself up you need to do more than that just to maintain the same level and you need to do exponentially more to get to the next level and the next level and the next level and trust me when I say when you get complacent with something that you've eased the gas off you will feel unfulfilled the masculine energy I should do a full video on like masculine feminine energy the masculine energy is all about goal striving and progress to like goals the freedom the, the freedom of restraints that's very sexual in a certain sense the masculine energy is all about the progress to like freedom like that's literally how we have sex it's about the progress to like freedom does that make sense and that's the way that we live our lives if you then stop that progress and let it go down and down and down we don't feel good about that we feel very bad when there's like a mission in our lives that we've let go with that we've let slow down that we've gotten complacent in because we focused on something else or we just wanted to like you know enjoy the the pleasure here oh you know i, I was fine settling with her she's the, she's the best that i could get i just had a realization so i was just sat in a cafe with my two friends and i was journaling and journaling about like okay how can we take this youtube channel to the next level i didn't even plan to like sort of announce this or anything but um I was just kind of journaling, brainstorming ideas. Okay, how can we get like triple the audience size? How can we get triple the views? And I'm writing down a bunch of like YouTube stuff like, oh, you know, we, we can uh, increase the click-through rate or, you know, I could speak and like read more books and give more advice or I could try and increase the, the viewer retention and you know, all this like limited thinking. And I asked Sam and he just said like, nah, I don't think it's that stuff. And you know, we just kind of spoke about it and we ended up thinking, you know what? The growth of the channel, the growth of this movement is tied entirely to my own self-improvement journey. If I grew exponentially very quickly, let's say in the next three months, if I became like such an upgraded version, Hamza 2.0, if I truly, you know, stick or twist, if I twisted hard, if I got like the complete opposite of complacent, the channel would grow because way more young men would come to the channel to watch me talk, wouldn't they? Because imagine if I became like a martial arts fighter, I've literally considered this, right? Imagine if I sign up now for a, a Muay Thai fight and I'm fucking training hard for that. Imagine if I become a professional fighter and I'm not just like a little YouTuber who's got like a bit of muscle now and I'm, I'm a professional fighter who's coming to the camera to teach you, okay, this is how you skyrocket your levels of discipline. Oh, you're feeling tired? Well, this is what I do for my training. Oh, you're in pain? Well, this is what I do. This is the mindset that works for me when I've won three Muay Thai fights by now. Well, the YouTube channel will grow, wouldn't it? And I really, you know, I started brainstorming a bunch of things that I could do that would kind of develop myself. And I realized, you know what? I'm gonna be totally honest with you. You know, I'm the guy on camera. I'm the self-improvement guy who's, who's talking to you, bro. I've been complacent. I have been complacent. In the last six years, the last one year, bro, the first year of my real self-improvement start, like the real journey that I had was May 2020. In the first six months, I made literally zero to one progress like this, like an amazing, mind-blowing progress. I went from being like a video game addict, like full-on addict, a weed addict, a porn addict, and I stopped all of that straight away and I started making videos, okay, this is how I did my dopamine detox. I started making videos saying, okay, this is how I quit video games. And that was like completely new. The channel fucking blew up and within a year we had like 100,000 subscribers. And then I did grow 100%, you know, from that moment, I did grow. I, I was going to the gym very consistently. I was reading a lot of books. I was getting better as like being like a manager, a team leader. I was improving my skills, like leadership, influence, persuasion. I was hiring more people. I was, you know, gaining muscle and strength in the gym and being productive and, you know, getting onto, onto like high performance routines. And the channel's grown, bro. You can look at like the stats. The channel has grown like this, right? Very, very nice growth, but not like exponentially because I haven't. I realized like what's happened in the last 
six months or one year, I've had a lot of growth, especially like character growth. I never thought about character previously, but I haven't had like a full on like huge level of discomfort with my life back at home when I was in the UK. This right here, what you're seeing is like a big level of growth. This is me traveling halfway across the world, living in a completely different area, living a very different life to what I was living like in the UK. Like we have motorbikes here, we go for rides. I, I, I keep speeding and I train Muay Thai here. I'm like away from distractions. I went out one night here, literally went out one night and I slept with a girl. I had like casual sex and like I, I've been saying a lot on my channel that like I don't think that's good for me and I really re-emphasize okay, it's not good for me. And um, I literally haven't even drank, I haven't drank alcohol, I haven't taken any drugs or anything, I haven't played video games, I've barely been on things like Instagram and you know like dopamine shit, I haven't even watched YouTube videos, even my favorite YouTubers like First Man, I haven't even been watching YouTube, I haven't had the time to, literally just been out and about, just like living life and sort of being challenged in like various ways, like setting up in a new place and everything. And I really, I just started brainstorming a bunch of ideas and I was like, I have like somewhat gotten complacent back at home. There wasn't like a huge level of discomfort. And so this is a question to ask yourself because I did this practice and I had the humility that you can see here to openly hold my hand up and say, you know what? Like, like obviously compared to Jeffrey's bro, we're doing very well, but like we've got some high standards for ourselves. So let's not like pussy about here. I admitted to myself with my high standards that yep, compared to my high standards, I did get pretty complacent for like the last six months when I was back home. Yeah, I lifted some weights. Yeah, I got consistent. I got bigger. Yeah, I read for like four hours a day and I, I really grew the business and everything. But for my high fucking standards, bro, like nothing was like that life-changing back at home for the last six months. So ask yourself this question because I asked myself this question and it really reframed my mind. I asked myself, how much discomfort did I really feel in the last six months of my routine back at home? And there wasn't much. You know, the times I was most uncomfortable that I experienced the most discomfort, the most problems that I had to solve was that I've taken five holidays this year. This is kind of like the sixth. This is more long-term traveling. But I took five holidays. At the start of the year, I went to Mexico. Then I went to Dubai, then Amsterdam twice, and then Greece and now I'm in Thailand. So six places, six places I traveled, I've experienced a lot of growth, a lot of discomfort, a lot of like problem solving with all six trips. But apart from that, in my daily routine back at home, bro, I wasn't challenged. I wasn't experiencing much growth and it shows. I built the muscle, I'm in the best shape of my life. The YouTube channel grew, I, I read a lot, I hired a lot of people and everything, but like I wasn't challenged, challenged. I wasn't like, you know, put to like, a test that is so important to have in your life so be totally honest with no filter right now have you been challenged recently like truly challenged have you had some like goal in your mind some accomplishment that you want which is like uncomfortable not just you know like oh yeah well you know follow my morning routine my nighttime routine i'll meditate for five minutes bro that's easy have you like challenged yourself with something big so you you like meditating you think it's important Sign up for a Vipassana retreat. It's like three days where you literally just meditate. That's like a level of challenge. That's like not getting complacent. It'd be so easy for you to think, well, you know, I've been meditating for a while, so I'll add 20 minutes a day. Well, bro, sign up and fucking meditate for three days straight. Oh, you, you've been weightlifting and you, you know, you've been making great progress. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, your physique's looking really good, bro. Sign up to a bodybuilding competition. That's the level of growth. Like that's like the inspiring like, thing of like, oh shit, we've got that coming up. I need to take this seriously. That's how you stop getting complacent because you make some progress and it's so easy to just take your foot off the gas and say you know what like oh look at me I'm so great like look at this physique now I can eat some shit now I can go to the restaurant with my friends because you know I've, I've done it now oh like you know I've made some money in my business well <laughs> let's go spend that money and let's like take a step back from the business because I've done it now no we need to double down on this stuff people get complacent when they have been fueled by external motivation does that make sense you get complacent if you've been thinking so much about the reward of the thing instead of the practice of the thing itself because if you loved weightlifting you wouldn't get complacent after you've built a good physique. You'll get more and more and more into progressively overload. But if all you focused on was the physique, well, then you'd build a physique and then it, you'll get complacent. If all you focused on was getting that, this is the one I see a lot. If all you focused on was getting the girlfriend, I really want to get a girl. I really want to have sex. Well, then when you get her, what happens? You'll get complacent. Why? Because that's all you focused on. And so now you've got it. Well, now you can ease your foot off the gas because you know, you've achieved your goal. So you can finally bulk now because you know, like you've already got the girl, so you don't need the abs anymore. But if your goal was about becoming the best man that you could be, and of course the byproduct of that is getting a girlfriend, attracting women. Well, then you wouldn't just get complacent because it would be an everlasting purpose it would be like this mission that is ongoing this video is long as fuck because i really want you to take this seriously there is some area of your life that you are complacent in right now that you have not been challenged where are you comfortable comfort is the killer of man say it with me comfort is the killer of man and discomfort discomfort challenge problems 
That is where all growth arises. How much discomfort, how much challenge, how many problems have you felt recently? How many failures have you experienced recently? There's a video on my channel. It's a very short, it's, it's like kind of like a motivational kind of like video. You might find it a bit cringe. You might find it like fucking sick. It's titled, I'm a failure. You can search for it on YouTube or something. Just YouTube like Hamza, I'm a failure. It's like five minutes long. It's like a motivational video I edited myself. It's kind of cool. And I literally said in it like, you need to understand that being a failure is a good thing, bro. I am a failure. I fail at a lot of things. I fail at so many things. That is what causes growth. That is what gets you to success. So be honest right now. Be totally honest. How many things have you failed at recently? In the last three months, how many things have truly challenged you? In the last three months, how many true problems have arose for you? Ask these questions and journal. Have total humility and total honesty. Make sure you answer these questions with total truth because you can literally lose years of your life to this shit or you could fast track your growth that success because the majority of people are going to get complacent but if you're one of the very very few young men who are literally keeping these thoughts in mind literally saying these words in your brain like yep i'm reaching a good level of success there's going to be a point where i feel like i can take my foot off the gas that's when i've actually got to double down because that means i'm very close to those exponential gains you're gonna stand out bro you're gonna stand out in this space online every guy is trying to get into like the top 20 percent of men the top 10 percent the top one percent bro trust me when i say that barrier is crossed when there is like uh, the ability to be complacent and i'm so excited for you because now you've got this mindset you've got these thoughts it's time to do some journaling and just be so ready because you're gonna get there you're on self-improvement you're doing the right things you are gonna feel that moment when it's so easy for you to be complacent and when you feel that just think to yourself bro every other guy who's at the same point as you the majority of them are gonna stop the majority of them are gonna eat that cake. The majority of them are gonna settle down with that girl that they don't even like. The majority of them are just gonna like spend all the money that they've just made. Stick or twist. That's a fantastic video. It's on First Man's channel, Stick or Twist. You should watch that video as well. You can subscribe to our channel if you want to. Welcome to the cult. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.